Hey everybody, welcome back to the Digital Health Entrepreneurship Show. We are here with Lawrence Gerard. Uh, my name is Seth Silvers and we're here with Lee as well. And uh, Lawrence, today you were telling us about this letter that 12 U.S. senators recently sent to the head of Medicare. And we thought that would be super valuable to share with our audience. So share with us like what is going on with this letter and uh, give us some context for what's happening right now. Well, there's right now a national effort to prevent type 2 diabetes. It's called the National Diabetes Prevention Program. And it's a CDC initiative where there's about 1,500 uh, diabetes prevention programs delivering this either in their local community or online through delivery methods such as telemedicine like like Fruit Street does. Um, but at the moment, Medicare has only decided to pay for in-person diabetes prevention programs at hospitals, churches, YMCAs. Um, a few weeks ago, they told those programs that you can go ahead and deliver some of your classes online through virtual methods, but you cannot enroll new people. So that means that companies like Fruit Street that deliver the program online can't do Facebook advertising and then just sign up new Medicare patients. It's only for Medicare patients that are already enrolled into a diabetes prevention. Obviously frustrating because over the next two years, we're still probably going to be dealing with COVID-19. And it's probably not the best idea to have uh, you know 20 people that are 70 years old sitting in a room together for an hour, right? Um, because one of the issues with the virus is that if you're exposed to someone for more than 10 minutes, that's kind of, it seems like how long you have to be in the same room as someone generally speaking, uh, where that at least significantly increases your risk. And so it appears that this letter is encouraging Medicare to actually allow new people to enroll into the uh, diabetes prevention program in a digital format. So I just go ahead and um, show you the letter here. I just read a little bit of it. So it says in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we are writing to request that you build upon the steps taken in your recent interim rule with uh, comment period by making CDC recognize virtual diabetes prevention program providers eligible for reimbursement in the Medicare DPP expanded model. We continue to strongly support permanent eligibility for these providers who have the potential to dramatically expand access to beneficiaries in need. And we urge you to ensure their eligibility for at least the duration of the COVID-19 public health emergency. This step would both enable access for millions of eligible beneficiaries and provide key foundational data on the effectiveness and integrity of virtual programs with the Medicare DPP. According to the CDC and emerging research from across the globe, older individuals and those suffering from serious medical conditions such as diabetes are at a higher risk of experiencing severe illness and even death after contracting COVID-19. So what they're saying here is that uh, individuals with diabetes have a much higher um, mortality risk for COVID-19, which is why it's even more important now to <clears throat> prevent type 2 diabetes. So then it goes on to say, while well, all Americans should adhere to these instructions of health professionals and practice social distancing, these directives are all the more important for at-risk populations, including those who the Medicare DPP aims to serve. And that's alluding to the fact that people that are older have a higher mortality uh, the letter continues, even before this pandemic began to spread in the United States, many Medicare beneficiaries faced considerable access challenges that prevented them from participating in this potentially life-saving program. So what they're saying there is that there's only I don't know, maybe 500 Medicare diabetes prevention programs. So there's states that have one program or two programs. So the closest program is you know, a multiple hour drive away. So why not offer them that through telemedicine? Uh, then it says, the COVID-19 pandemic, however, has exacerbated those gaps. In-person sessions risk life-threatening viral exposure, and yet beneficiaries cannot readily turn to virtual programs as a viable alternative given persistent reimbursement barriers. While CMS's recent uh, rulemaking took an important step toward uh, forward in recognizing the value of certain types of virtual sessions from a subsection of providers, the parameters outlined in the rule create barriers to entry for many high quality virtual providers and potential new participants in addition to substantially constraining options for beneficiaries currently participating in the programs. So basically saying there are virtual programs like Fruit Street and other programs that are high quality because the CDC actually tracks Fruit Street's outcomes. And so we have the highest outcome rate that you can get called full recognition. So you have to achieve things like 5% average weight loss for people that participate for nine months. And so what's the difference between those outcomes delivered online and an in-person program, right? An in-person program would be say 22 classes with a lifestyle coach where you write down what you eat, you write down what you exercise on a piece of paper, you weigh yourself. And our program is more high touch where it's it's digital, right? So it's group video conferencing on Zoom, it's a wireless scale, a Fitbit, 
taking pictures of your food, text messaging in an app. So in many cases, our outcomes are better than an in-person program. So they're saying, why not, why not use common sense and pay for that? Uh, so then it goes on to say um, that uh, in contrast to the number of other flexibilities included in the rulemaking and waivers released by CMS, which leverage innovative tools to improve access and care quality, the agent temporary policy changes for the Medicare DTP leave significant opportunities for further development and enhancement. The COVID-19 public health emergency exemplifies the importance of integrating virtual health technology solutions into our healthcare system on a sustainable long-term basis. And we will continue to work to ensure that CDC recognized virtual providers are full participants in the Medicare DTP expanded model. In the near term, however, we ask that you protect at-risk populations and preserve and bolster access to a proven program by allowing for robust and meaningful virtual provider reimbursement eligibility during this public health emergency. And then you have what looks like 12 senators on a bipartisan basis signing this um, letter to Medicare. So um, that is pretty interesting and hopefully a step forward for virtual diabetes prevention programs. Do you think this will work? Um, yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, you would hope they would just approve the letter in its current format, but I'm concerned that um, there's different types of online dive. So it's called a distance learning program, which means we have live classes. So the way that we're doing this video call, it's the same way that a Fruit Street class would be conducted. Other co companies like Omada Health or Lark fall into a, a, a category of online. That's a CDC category, which means they don't have a live class. They have recorded content, articles, videos. Uh, Lark is an AI chatbot, with very you know minimal human interaction compared to Fruit Street. So in, in California, for example, there are certain situations with Medicaid where they will only reimburse for distance learning and they will not reimburse for online programs. So I think that the senators should say that, you know, please pay for all these programs like Fruit Street, Omada, LARC, all these other diabetes prevention programs, Habit New, all these other ones. Uh, but in the alternative, right, in the alternative, why don't you just pay for the distance learning programs that have full recognition with the CDC? Because Medicare has a history of saying, you need to do live video and audio because they're worried about fraud and abuse. So the question is, if I'm on video with you and I show you my driver's license and you can see my face, I mean, the, the probability for fraud is pretty low. Uh, so that would be that we're trying to get in touch with these senators to say, look, give them a safe facing alternative, face saving alternative um, in case they don't approve the full thing. I'm curious, I'm curious are there other you know, prevention programs that Medicare does pay for, for instance, heart disease prevention programs? Well, they do, but not necessarily on a virtual basis. I mean, I don't know every single program on the planet that exists, but I mean, they will pay for things like chronic care management, which is really treatment of patients with chronic disease through the phone and through telemedicine. Uh, but, you know, the diabetes prevention program is one of the, the first large scale prevention programs in terms of diet and lifestyle. Um, and, and, you know, everyone's hoping that they pay for the digital model because right now they only pay for the in-person model. Huh. There was something you said that back there, you were quoting something and it really irked me. Is it, did I hear correctly that they will only allow the reimbursement of existing participants and they're blocking new participants? That's right. So if what's, you, what's the deal with that? You're like, it doesn't make, it doesn't seem logical or healthy yeah. or beneficial. You know, like what's, what's, what's uh, it certainly happening? defies common sense, but, um, yeah, so what they're saying is that let's say that you get a blood test done and you discover for the first time that you're pre-diabetic, which means you have elevated blood glucose and you have a very high risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Let's say you're a Medicare beneficiary. Um, they're not going to allow you to enroll into a virtual diabetes prevention program. You would first have to enroll in an in-person program. You'd have to risk your life by going to like a local YMCA or something like that, do the first class in person, and then you can do it online. And that first class means you're sitting in a classroom for an hour with, you know, 10 or 20 other people that could have been exposed to COVID-19. So that's why it's so ridiculous, right? It's like, why not just let them do the whole program online? Are there other distinctions about the diabetes prevention program? So you, you, you touched on some major distinctions that the CDC offers. Are there any other uh, groups that, you know, that our listeners can and viewers can be, you know, learn from? Um, well, I'll show you a quick fun video uh, to wrap up our discussion here. Um, let's see. There's a fun risk quiz that people can watch that the Ad Council put out.
that's kind of like a fun risk quiz that the CDC has developed. Um, but then, um, you know, let, let me show you what the actual um, diabetes prevention program is. Hi, I'm Joan London. 84 million Americans are facing a serious health risk and don't even know because they have no symptoms. Are you one of them? We're talking about prediabetes, a condition where your blood sugar level is higher than normal and without intervention will likely become full-on type 2 diabetes within five years. But the good news is you can keep that from happening. By eating healthy and being more active, you can greatly reduce your risk. And there is help for you at the National Diabetes Prevention Program. I became a diabetes educator because it's a disease that is spreading all over our country, and it's something that could affect anybody. We focus on people who have diabetes um, or prediabetes, and it's really important to have people prevent this chronic disease. I teach them a lot about movement. I teach them about their heart rate and how to keep it safe. And we don't ever use that word diet. I hate that word, actually. <laughs> It really is just them learning basic, fundamental nutrition. Georgina's gotten us to really look at food differently. Uh, I, I find myself going to supermarkets and spending much more time reading uh, food labels. The members thank me every week by reaching their goals and making themselves proud. My lifestyle has changed. I'm, I'm drinking more water. When I got um, with my doctor this past year, I think at that point I was like probably 190, going to 200 pounds. I'm 170 something now. I started learning a lot of stuff that I don't know. I'm still learning. That's what I keep coming because she's a very nice teacher. And I improve a lot. When a member makes huge changes, it's like winning the lottery. It's like saving someone's life. To learn more on how you can prevent type 2 diabetes, log on to cdc.gov slash diabetes TV. We'll see you next time. I'm Joan London. It's, um, you know, how an in-person program would work, and then I'll just show you how the digital program works for, with Fruit Street. Did you know that, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than one out of three adults in the U.S. have prediabetes? In fact, 90% of those people don't even know they have it, which might include you or someone you love. The good news is that Fruit Street's Diabetes Prevention Program can help you reduce your risk for type 2 diabetes by half by helping you lose 5 to 7% of your weight through diet and lifestyle improvements. During the program, you will be able to video chat with a dietitian and a small group of other participants on a weekly basis from the convenience of the Fruit Street mobile app or your computer. During each class, you will receive advice and coaching from a registered dietitian on topics such as diet, exercise, sleep, and stress management. Your dietitian will work with you to set small, attainable weekly goals that add up to big differences over time, improving your health and helping you reach your weight loss goals. At the beginning of the program, you will receive a free wireless scale to help you track weight loss progress. Just put the batteries in and it will already be connected to your Fruit Street account. <laughs> it's that easy. After a few weeks of participating in the program, you'll have a chance to earn a free Fitbit to track your physical activity. In between each class, you will be able to take pictures of your food in our mobile application and receive feedback from your dietitian. When you sign up, you'll be able to pick a day and time for a weekly video chat with your dietitian. By signing up for Fruit Street, you can lose weight, reduce your risk for diabetes, and start living a healthier lifestyle. Enroll in the Fruit Street Diabetes Prevention Program today. Show me your driver's license. You have a wireless scale, so I see your weight. This just seems like common sense. And I think that it seems obvious when you lay it out like you have today, where we see the current prevention program and then we see what the options are. Um, it seems like it should make perfect sense that um, people should be paying for this and healthcare providers should be paying for this. So I appreciate you giving, kind of educating us, giving us perspective. And I think uh, this episode will kind of hopefully show uh, the listeners that are not super familiar with this, like all the, the logistics involved, but also that, um, you know, there's work, there's still work to be done and stuff. So what's what's next with this as far as getting um, 
you know, getting Medicaid, Medicare, is it Medicaid? Medicare. Medicare. Um, getting Medicare to actually be able to fund this. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to be contacting some senators and we'll, we'll let you know what happens on the next episode. Cool. I love it. That's the, that's the fun part about, uh, about this is that, uh, we're, that this is kind of happening live. Like we're going to be giving regular updates and stuff. So I encourage the listeners, um, come back every day to see what is going on with, uh, Lawrence and Fruit Street. But Lawrence, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thanks.